Right, uh, moving on now, you're watching The Globe here on SABC News Channel. Let's uh, look at some of uh, the other news across the globe. We go to Pakistan now, where Pakistan's election commission disqualified former Prime Minister Imran Khan from holding public office. Uh, this comes after a tribunal found him guilty of unlawfully settling state gifts given by foreign dignitaries and heads of state. Khan, who has denied the charges, was accused of misusing his position to purchase and sell gifts received during state visits abroad that were worth over 140 million Pakistani rupees, about 11.5 million rand. The gifts included expensive wristwatches given by a royal family, according to government officials who have alleged previously that Khan's aides sold them in Dubai. The tribunal was to deliver a detailed ruling later in the day saying how long the former premier would be barred from public office. In the short order which we have received till now, the Imran Khan has been disqualified for the time being. Now he, it is up to him to file appeal before the Honorable Supreme Court and the main decision will again come from the Supreme Court that for which term he is disqualified. Former law minister Azam Nazir Tarar said Khan would be disqualified for five years. Fawad Chowdhury, former information minister in Khan's government and spokesperson for the PTI party, said the election commission tribunal had no jurisdiction in the matter and said a challenge would be lodged in the high court. We will challenge that. Under the law, the decision is absolutely a mockery of justice. This is against the law. We will challenge uh, this decision in the, in the, in the Supreme Court. After the tribunal's ruling, Chaudhary called for supporters to come out on the streets to topple this parliament. The ruling coalition that took over from Khan after his ouster in a confidence vote earlier this year had filed the case before the election commission. Sami Hamdi is editor-in-chief at the International Interest, a geopolitical risk consulting firm based in London. He joins us now for the very latest on this. Sami, a very good evening to you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. So this is the latest in a slew of charges against the former prime minister. Tell us a little bit more about what he's accused of having done here. I think uh, he's accused of selling things uh, like uh, jewelry, diamonds, watches, all that amount to, what, 600? Hundred and thirty thousand US dollars. Uh, give us a little bit of background to this case. Thank you for having me. I think uh, first and foremost, what is important to highlight is that this case has been ongoing in the courts for quite some time. This case has been there for a while since Imran Khan was in power and he was accused of taking gifts from foreign dignitaries uh, and the like, which is normal practice amongst foreign dignitaries, uh, and that Imran Khan didn't declare some of them to the necessary departments and then managed to buy back some of those gifts at a discounted price and then sold them for their real value, thereby making a profit. Imran Khan has always insisted that he went through the proper channels. At the time when the accusations first emerged, he insisted that the gifts that he did not declare, he did not do so because of national security issues and that his tax documents uh, stated and demonstrated the gifts that he had bought back from the relevant ministries and that he had subsequently sold. So Imran Khan, as far as he's concerned, as far as uh, the process is concerned, he insists that he followed all of the legal channels. And indeed, when you speak to legal experts over the verdict of this decision and this judgment, there is a general consensus of a surprise at the weak nature of the judgment, which has fueled accusations that this judgment uh, is heavily politicized, particularly given that the decision has been announced just days after Imran Khan's party swept up in the weekend's by-elections. Out of eight by-elections, his party won six. And this is on top of the by-elections that Imran Khan has been winning landslides. So there is this perception that this verdict is the latest to try to stop this irresistible momentum of Imran Khan, who has essentially brought pressure to bear on the, a government that is keen to ensure that no general election is held in which Imran Khan runs. Hmm. Now, we understand that Imran Khan's legal team says that it's going to mount an appeal in the Islamabad High Court, but that the Interior Ministry in the country says that um, 
it's warning him and his supporters against mounting any such appeal or opposition to uh, this finding. Can it hold muster in any other court? I think it's important to put this into context. I think first and foremost, what's abundantly clear is that there is a genuine trepidation amongst the current establishment and the government over Imran Khan's momentum. I don't think this government or indeed the establishment expected Imran Khan to win landslides in Punjab and to win landslides uh, in other by-elections. So there has been this very deep concern over the prospect that in any general election it is Imran Khan who will sweep up and that as a result of the manner in which he was ousted from power, he's now more popular and more powerful in terms of popular support than he has ever been. The second point that's worth noting is that as part of this initiative to push back against Imran Khan, we've seen a number of tactics that have been tried. Amongst them have been trying to accuse Imran Khan of terrorism, a charge that was later uh, put on hold as a result of the popular backlash. And Imran Khan was later given bail and he wasn't even technically arrested. And he apologized for the comments that he made that led to those particular terrorism charges. But the point here being they were unable to indict him on terrorism charges. The unique nature about these particular allegations is that now what we're seeing is that an establishment that is popular, popularly, that is widespread, perceived to be in Pakistan as being heavily corrupt, is essentially trying to say to the people, look, you may think that we in the government are corrupt, but here we have proven that your revolutionary hero is also corrupt. In other words, if you can't beat them, join them. This is an attempt, this verdict, to paint Imran Khan with the same brush that the Pakistanis, ordinary Pakistanis, have painted the current government in order to ruin Imran Khan's claims that he is this anti-corruption fighter. And it's in this context that your question becomes becomes relevant because the reality is that those who argue that the judgment is weak and can be overturned, there are concerns amongst the government that Imran Khan can overturn this verdict very easily on appeal in the High Court and the Supreme Court. And if he overturns this appeal, then instead of Imran Khan looking as if he's this corrupt figure that is not uh, sincere and is anti-corruption, instead it looks like a corrupt establishment tried to paint him as being corrupt and they failed once more. And this is why there are suggestions that the Interior Ministry doesn't want Imran Khan to appeal because they believe he might win this appeal and it might jeopardize this latest move on the part of the government and the establishment to essentially contain Imran Khan and Imran Khan's momentum over this fear that if there is a democratic process, if Imran Khan is allowed to run in elections, if PTI are allowed to run in elections, then this government is set for a very heavy defeat, more heavy than perhaps if it had just waited out Imran Khan's term until the next election. So it's in this context, the fear that if Imran Khan appeals, he will easily overturn this verdict and he will simply come out of it stronger than ever. Hmm.